Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and today we are here to do the things with the people. Specifically, bad people, villainous antagonists if you will, because every One Piece arc is only as good as its villain. But that's a bit problematic because how do we determine just how good the villain is? Well, we do that by arbitrarily ranking them on the internet. So I am here today to present the Grand Line Review potentially ultimate One Piece villain tier list maybe. And I wanna make this clear right from the get go, this is not a power based ranking. Characters here are going to be judged based solely on the criteria of how well they perform their role as a narrative antagonist, but also more rules. We don't have time to throw in every villain who has ever appeared in the series, so this video will be examining primary arc antagonists only. The ones that really drive all of the, well, all of the bad stuff. And very interestingly, there are certain arcs that don't have primary antagonists to examine, such as the Reverie or even arguably Whiskey Peak. Meanwhile, there are also non-canon arcs that do have primary antagonists, but we will be ignoring them because I don't have the space in my mind brain to think about Eric the Whirlwind. Ugh, now I'm thinking about him. Oh, this, is, this is off to a bad start. But in total, we have 23 candidates to rank who will be drawn at random from this One Piece themed hat and plonked accordingly in various places for assorted reasons. And with that, I think we're good to go. Go subscribe to the Grand Line Review, that is, which will result in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered directly into your YouTube feed because we are slowly working our way towards that wonderful one million number, so let's become the pirate kings of YouTube. And please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. And we are going to, if I can ever get it out of the hat, ah, oh, we are going to begin with uh, Alveda. I was going to say very appropriate because she was the first villain fought in One Piece, but that honor actually goes to Higuma the Bear, who we will unfortunately encounter later. As for Alveda, I think that her crowning charm as an antagonist is just how satisfying it is to see her get punched into utter oblivion. But we do have a bit of a problem because we are going to have so many other, quite frankly, better villains coming up. So Alvida, for now, you're going to occupy a solid C. Next up is Foxy. Oh no, this is, this is a slow start. Which is an unintentional pun, but I'll take it. Foxy is a unique antagonist to rank because he is, well, he's far from traditional. His entire goal is to be something of a comical fool and he does perform that role to perfection. For some people, he does outstay his welcome a bit, I would say. And if we're talking about impactful, then ew, as much as it pains me, I think we've got no choice but to send him into the dank foxhole of D. Now we have... Crocodile. Crocodile to me is the gold standard of One Piece antagonists. He has absolutely everything going for him, be it cool design, new and seemingly invincible powers for the time anyway, and a level of intellect that had been missing from all villains prior to him. And of course, he has the honor of helming an entire saga. Crocodile's defeat is still to this day a scene that I will go back and rewatch over and 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 over. As far as I'm concerned, almost every antagonist in the series is just chasing Crocodile's croco tail. There are very few, if any, who can measure up to his impact. So we are going to take a cue from the word sand and give Crocodile a capital S. Actually, every letter in sand is here on this tier list. Actually, except for C and B. And also there's no N. Oh, I'm, I'm terrible at this. Next up though, we drew Caesar Clown and he's very similar to Foxy. A more comedic presence who I don't think could be taken completely seriously at any given moment. I guess he is a much more evil and threatening Foxy, so I'll, I'll give Caesar that. He's just one of those characters who I really disliked as a villain, but really started to love when he became just a side dude. So that's not a stunning endorsement of villainry, but I can't in good faith place him on the same tier as Alveda, so let's grace this bumbling fart clown with the B. Don Krieg. This feels like a bit of an easy one to me because Krieg is the very definition of standard. He does an adequate job of being a complete fumble nut and there's quite a bit of satisfaction to be gained from his defeat. His problem for me lies more in memorability. Of every East Blue villain, Krieg is the one who I probably remember the least. He doesn't have the X factor of an Arlong or a Kuro, or even the longevity of an Alveda or a Buggy. So he's just kind of disappointing. And disappointing is a magnificent D word for Mr. Dion Krieg to be shoved into the D land. Charlotte Katakuri, ooh. Here we have one of the rare challenges for Crocodile's S tier status. And it's one of those situations where I do need to be careful with my language because Katakuri isn't so much of a villain as he is an antagonist. Just like his beloved Donuts, Katakuri is a very well-rounded character with a lot of room for inner growth because Donuts have holes in them, so there's room and that's the joke. 
But I also don't think that One Piece has ever had an antagonist who is so simultaneously threatening and yet genuinely captivating. Because there is a point during his fight with Luffy where you really do start to root for Katakuri. I've not felt that with anyone else in this series before or since actually. And as a result, I think it's only right that we open up a brand new donut tier because Katakuri really has deliciously transcended what it is to be a One Piece antagonist. Wapol. Oh, jeez, we've, we've just taken a big step down. I'd like to start by saying that I do really like Wapol these days. His cover story was, <laughs> was hilarious. And I think he definitely works best as a, well, a tertiary character. As an antagonist, He's weird. If anything lets Drum Island down as an arc, it is definitely Wapple. He's just lacking in everything I'm looking for. He's not threatening. His design is almost as almost foxy levels of goofy, and he doesn't provide a lot of, if any, memorable action. So Wapple seems like a pretty easy D. However, I do feel bad putting him next to Don Krieg. Bad for Krieg, that is. So we're gonna move Krieg up to C and make some room for Wapple. Also, why is Alveda in C? I mean, I just, uh, what what was I thinking? We're gonna move her down to D because I clearly had like a brain malfunction there. Galdino or Mr. Three, I guess. He's here because he was the driving force behind Little God. And he was, well, he was decent enough. I mean, come to think of it, Galdino and his candle posse are the first group to properly threaten the Straw Hats. If not for Usopp and Karu, Little Garden is, it's pretty much the end of One Piece. So Galdino, look, he does get some points there. I really don't think he was terrible at all, but I don't think he particularly excelled at anything. And for that, reason we're gonna shove him in the middle with the bee. Bellamy the hyena. Bellamy is the most insufferable, cocky, modesty, immune chonk blonde that I have ever come across in all of media. And that's exactly why he's gonna do pretty well here. Bellamy's legacy on One Piece is like no other antagonist. This man was beaten with a single punch, but that punch is arguably the most memorable in the whole series. And that's because Bellamy was built up so perfectly in such a short amount of time. I would argue that he succeeds where similar characters like Don Creek fail. I mean, they're both absolute fecal stains on the world, but there's just something about Bellamy that like really lights this fire of pure loathing inside me. But then he got punched in the face and everything was all good. And that is a testament to just how well he did his job. It was a very different job to a saga-based antagonist like a crocodile or a flamingo. But what Bellamy accomplishes in a handful of chapters is absolutely stunning and worthy of nothing less than an A. Captain Morgan. Oh, uh, Captain Morgan. I said before that Don Krieg was probably the most forgettable East Blue villain and I would now like to amend that to Morgan. He's a stereotypical dude guy, like a really bad Bad dude guy. In the manga, he even ordered his men to commit suicide, and that's, that's bad. I just forget about him though, and I also forget about the fact that he was defeated by Zoro, which I come to think of it, that's quite rare, and rare things should not be forgotten. A main antagonist not defeated by Luffy. Morgan, well, he just does nothing for me, and when someone does nothing for me, what we do is we open a brand new tier, a Simon tier generally, and that's where we sweep all of the garbage into. Magellan. Now, Mr. Poison Boy is unique because he's an arc antagonist that remained undefeated. And that is a big plus for him because that adds to the sheer threat he represented. At no stage did anyone in Luffy's escape party have any hope of beating Magellan. He was almost like a destructive natural force rather than some dude with horns who spends most of his day on the toilet. Regardless of that, whenever he was on page or even on screen, I felt this legitimate sense of dread. Being pursued by Magellan is like being chased by the Slender Man or something. Once again, no hope of victory, only the slim, slim, chant of escape. And that's what makes Magellan a very strong A for me. Daddy Kaido. I don't know why I said daddy. I, I've got, I've, I'm really in the Yamato mindset. <laughs> I'll start by saying that this ranking isn't likely to be fair because neither Kaido's story nor his arc has concluded at the time of this recording. But at the moment, I just can't bring myself to give him an S. Kaido is the most invincibly fearsome being that we have ever come across. But right now, that's uh, that's kind of just all he is. He's like a, a personified wall. Other than raw strength, he currently lacks something for me. Something which may present itself in the future but not right now. So Kaido is going to tank a very sorry A. Higuma the bear. Here he is, the very first antagonist of One Piece and pretty amazing to think about, but he's actually the reason why Shanks lost his arm. There's not a lot of characters who have managed to wound an emperor of the sea to that degree, which that was an unintentional rhyme actually, I like it. Not that Shanks was an emperor at the time, but still. For someone so seemingly irrelevant, Higuma has had such a profound impact on One Piece and I think that's why he should be honored 
honored with a rank equal to that of his final resting place, which is the sea. Fleet Admiral Sakadude Guy. Sakazuki is his actual name, and I had a bit of trouble deciding whether or not to actually include him here. But in the end, I did deem that he is kind of the main antagonist in Marineford, and I think his actions do thoroughly back that up. He currently stands as the only antagonist to successfully kill a major protagonistic character in the One Piece, in the modern day, I suppose we should say. But I suppose I should also say that I don't count Perispero because Pedro killed himself. But Sakazuki, as a certified A-hole, will now nicely fit into a hole within the A, if that makes sense. It doesn't, what, what am I saying? Buggy the Clown. Controversial opinion at time, maybe, but I don't actually think that Buggy is a good villain. He shines quite brightly as a secondary character getting caught up in all sorts of clown-based shenaniganry, but when the actual drama was focused on him in Orange Town, it was all just a bit meh. So Buggy's delivery is going to make good on its name and plonk Buggy right into the D realm. This time it is an L. God himself hath arriveth onto this tier list. And quite frankly, I think that an L is a bit difficult to rank alongside our other antagonists, he does have a lot going for him and he strikes this strangely intriguing balance between raw power and raw comedy. He's kind of like Foxy if Foxy had the powers of some sort of thunder god. So very, very unique, which is why we are going to place NL on a satellite moon tier designed only for the most special of space villains, of which I guess he is now technically one. Captain Kuro. I make fun of Kuro a lot because his plan was about as stable as whole cake chateau during a tea party, but Kuro did put in a lot of decent work as an antagonist. He is no doubt memorable, fearsome, and very satisfying to see defeated. So I think that's more than enough to hand him a well-deserved B. Rob Lucci. If you ever needed any proof not to place your trust in cats, then this man is your wake-up call. However, Lucci did something more or less unprecedented in One Piece during his era, which was being introduced as an ally and then transforming into a big catty cat primary antagonist. What? Let's try that again. Lucci did something more or less unprecedented into during his era, which was being introduced as an ally and then transforming into the primary antagonist. Despite the fact that he's not particularly emotive and his general character could use a bit more meat, he did take us on quite a journey, as well as provided one of the most spectacular slugfests against Luffy in the entire series. He does his job immaculately, but I don't think he quite makes the impact of a true S-tier antagonist, so that simply leaves us with an A-sassin. Charlotte Lin Lin. This is probably the only instance on this list where I consider an arc as having two primary antagonists because Whole Cake Island is very much split between Big Mom and Katakuri for that role. When it comes to Big Mom though, I see her very similarly to how I described Magellan, an unstoppable force of nature with no hope of victory in her arc anyway. And while she does have arguably more substance to her at this stage than say Kaido, I still can't quite see her breaching that S tier. So we're going to have to award Big Mom with an A Vocado Cheesecake, which sounds disgusting to me. I'm a little bit Apparently it's a thing that you know, sick people like you eat. Oh, speaking of being sick, ugh, it's Hody Jones. I think I'm very much on the record as hailing Hody as probably the most lackluster antagonist in the series. And I mean, there's, there's a lot he does right. And when I say a lot, I mean one thing. What he does right is embody the primary idea of his arc being racism. In this case, the sort of blind zealot style and yet not entirely without reason racism. But what he does wrong is everything else. His design is like the before picture of Arlong's weight loss journey. He's never legitimately threatening. His presence is once again lackluster. And overall, he takes a massive backseat during the Fishman Island arc, which directs its energy more towards Fisher Tiger and Otohime, as it should, by the way, because that's where the substance is. And there are characters on this tier list with the exact same problems as Hody, the early East Blue villains in particular. But what they have going for them is that we only had to deal with them for a handful of chapters at most. Whereas Hody Jones is the main antagonist of a new world arc that lasts 51 chapters. That's a serious chunk of story. That's like 1 20th of One Piece as a whole. And Hody is, well, he's just not the guy to helm something that large. So we are going to do something unprecedented here and open up a brand new tier below Simon, which generally would be a double Simon. But in this case, we are exploring even further depths by opening the Fishman Simon tier, because that's firmly where I believe Hody Jones belongs. Go there. 
stay there and never come back. Arlong. Oh good, this this will balance things out. For someone introduced so early on, Arlong has such a powerful legacy in One Piece. As a villain, he did everything perfectly. He provided a strong threat, he generated this Bellamy-style hatred, and watching his defeat was one of the most euphoric occasions that I've had in the entire series experience thing. Regardless of comparative power or arc length, Arlong has served as a better antagonist than almost any other One Piece villain, and that's why our shark will be given a delicious S. Don Quixote do Flamingo. So I think we have another immediate S tier on our hands here because one of the villains who did do an equitable job to Arlong and Crocodile is certainly Mr. Stringpants. This man is the reason why 102 chapters of Dressrosa was not only bearable, but enjoyable. Also, Doflamingo has a proper X factor that I would argue even exceeds out of Crocodile. However, that might just be sheer flamboyancy. Either way, slap him right in the smile with an S. And now we have Gekko Moria. Look, he's all right, just give him a B to something. And there you have it, the potentially ultimate ranking tier thing featuring One Piece characters, some of which are better than others for reasons. But you need no reason to click this next video, although if you did, well, it's a video about One Piece, which is the thing that you like, because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series, so I look forward to seeing you there.